Hello, my name is Michael Culver and I'm a meteorologist at the National Weather Service Forecast Office in State College. In this presentation, I'll be giving you a tour of the office and a brief introduction of what we do. Our office is located at 328 Innovation Boulevard, part of Innovation Park on the north end of Penn State's campus. The building was recently named the Warren M. Washington Building after atmospheric scientist and Penn State alumnus Warren M. Washington. The Weather Forecast Office shares a suite with the Mid-Atlantic River Forecast Center on the third floor of the building. Here's a look at our operations floor. This is where most of our work happens. There are a few cubicles in the back of the suite that are not shown here um, where people do their research and their training, but as far as operational products, warning and watch issuance, um, forecast making, that all happens here on the ops floor. Each workstation has a dual monitor Windows computer as well as a three monitor AWIPS computer. AWIPS stands for Advanced Weather Interactive Processing System. Almost all of our official products are sent through AWIPS. We use AWIPS to monitor radar and issue warnings. We also use it to look at model data and make forecasts from that model data. And we use it to coordinate with neighboring offices. The Weather Service Forecast Office in State College is one of 122 local weather forecast offices across the country. This includes three in Alaska, one in Puerto Rico, one in Hawaii, and even one in Guam. In addition to the local weather forecast offices, there are also regional centers, such as the River Forecast Center, and regional headquarters. And then in addition to that, there are several national centers. You may have heard of a few including the National Hurricane Center, the Storm Prediction Center, the Weather Prediction Center, the Space Weather Prediction Center, the Ocean Prediction Center, Climate Prediction Center, and a few more. In total, there are five local weather forecast offices that serve the state of Pennsylvania. In addition to the State College Pennsylvania office, there's also the Pittsburgh Pennsylvania office, the Mount Holly, New Jersey office, also known as the Philadelphia office, and offices in Binghamton, New York, and Cleveland, Ohio. The State College office is the state liaison office because of those five offices, it's the only one that has all of its counties within the state of Pennsylvania. The state liaison office is in charge of communicating with state partners about hazardous weather impacting the state of Pennsylvania. That typically includes the State Department of Transportation, PennDOT, as well as the State Emergency Management, PEMA. The National Weather Service is part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. NOAA and the National Weather Service both fall under the Department of Commerce, which is a federal agency. And the National Weather Service, although it's many offices, we all have one mission, and that mission is the protection of life and property through the issuance of our forecasts and our warnings. The Weather Forecast Office in State College doesn't just have forecasters. We have 14 forecasters, but in addition to that, in order to meet our mission, we also have six electronic technicians and IT support who manage the radar and the computer systems. We have one hydrologist. We have a science and operations officer who's in charge of research and training. We have an observations program leader who works with partners who give us their observations every day. We have a warning coordination meteorologist who is in charge of training skywarn spotters and maintaining that when we issue warnings counties and individuals who receive those warnings know what to do with them we have an administrative assistant who helps us out with the budgeting staffing scheduling whole a whole lot of things and we have our boss the meteorologist in charge our office is open 24 hours a day every day of the year including holidays because we want to make sure that we're there to provide forecasts and warnings as well as maintain our critical observation systems Here's a couple pictures of some of the equipment that we maintain. I mentioned the Doppler radar and our computers, but there's also ASOS, which are observation stations that record weather at airports, and our electronic technicians support those as well. Here's a look at the radar product generator. This is a computer we have in the office that allows us to control the radar from the office. The office does not have the radar co-located with it, the reason for that is that the office is located in a valley. So the radar is actually about 10 miles away on the top of a ridge so that it can get a better view of the weather farther away. If the radar was down in the valley with us, it would actually, the radar beam would intersect with the mountains 
around us and it wouldn't be able to go out and, and intersect with actual weather that we care about. But anyway, this radar product generator computer actually lets us tweak the radar into different scanning strategies because based on different weather scenarios, the uh, optimal technique to scan those scenarios for the radar can be different. For example, we like to include more low level scans when there's tornadoes around to get better images of the lowest levels of the atmosphere. And we also like to make the radar scan in a more slow, sensitive strategy when there's snow. So that's just a couple of examples. So I mentioned that our office has 14 forecasters, uh, but obviously they're all not working at the same time. People need off days. So how are we typically staffed? Well, during the daytime and the evening, there's typically three forecasters working a shift together. And then on the midnight shift, there's two. Um, when there's three, there's a short-term desk who's in charge of forecasting for the first 24 to 36 hours of the forecast period. And this desk is typically staffed by the lead forecaster or the person who has the most experience forecasting because they are um, also assigned with warning decisions, aviation support, and having to call in extra staffing if the current weather um, requires us to make warning decisions that's going to require just more than three people working at the same time. The long-term desk is typically working on days two through day seven of the forecast. They're looking at longer term models. It is a bigger chunk of the time period of the forecast, but because it is out there in the longer range, um, it is harder to tweak the models to become uh, better, to add skill to that forecast period, especially the day four through eight period. There's only a few times that there's targets of opportunity, as we call them, to improve the models. And then our third person working operations during the day and the evening is our public service desk. And they answer the phone calls. We get plenty of phone calls from farmers here in Pennsylvania who want to know exactly when it's going to rain and for how long it's going to be dry. We're also the public interface at the public service desk. So we, um, we talk a lot with media folks, folks who are writing newspapers. We do radio interviews sometimes. We also maintain the know whether radio is working and has our products up on it. And uh, the public service desk also usually is tasked with any flood products, so any river, uh, any river flood warnings, and social media. Can't forget about social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter we, we have a presence on, and we also uh, crowdsource data and information, especially during thunderstorms, when people are talking about thunderstorm wind damage on social media, we want to know about that too. When we do get busy with severe weather, oftentimes we do have to call people in. Now this is an example of when there's nine people working in operations, so this is kind of a higher end severe weather event. But when we do have multiple people working the same severe weather event, we typically have a storm coordinator who is in charge of overseeing that everything happens. We have a social media person who not only pushes out information, but also takes in information. Like I said, if people are chatting about a thunderstorm, we'd love to know about it. We have a decision support meteorologist who is tasked with putting out briefings and keeping the emergency managers and our other partners in the loop about the severe weather. Then of course we have our radar and warning. Uh, sometimes it's a team, sometimes it's one person, depending on how severe and how widespread the event is. Then there's the public service desk, which again is answering the phones. Long-term forecaster again is doing the long-term grids and short-term forecaster doing the short-term grids because even when there's severe weather and we're doing our watches and warnings, the grids, uh, the, the normal forecast that we do every day still has to get done. And it's not, not in here per se, but uh, aviation is another one that goes hand in hand with the short-term forecaster uh, doing TAPS, which are aviation forecasts for the airports. So that's just a, a kind of a schematic of how we can staff up during severe weather. So as you can imagine, it definitely can get busy in this office when there's severe weather. Sometimes we even invite a member of the community, a volunteer who operates the ham radio, uh, which is a radio that we have in the office that can listen to spotters on spotter networks that communicate via the radio about severe weather that they're observing. So uh, we're very grateful to have that volunteer come in once in a while, and that's yet another person in the office. So sometimes we have as many as 10 people uh, 
or working a severe weather event together. A couple other things that we like to show our guests when they tour through the office. Uh, one of them is our rooftop weather station. We have that set up in the office so that we can monitor what's happening up on the rooftop. It's especially useful for wind gusts. Uh, when a thunderstorm rolls through, we can know immediately how strong it is. And then there's our conference room, which we typically use to hold workshops. Um, we have workshops just internal to the office where we train each other up at the beginning of each season for severe weather and winter and all that. We also have meetings with our core partners, including the broadcast media. We have a media workshop. We have meetings with uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, as well as emergency managers who frequent the office uh, for meetings. Then last but not least, one of our favorite features in this office is the windows. Uh, we have a beautiful view overlooking uh, Mount Nittany in the distance there. And we are treated to all sorts of magnificent views, uh, regardless of the season, whether it's a sunrise, a sunset, a snow squall, a thunderstorm, or a rainbow. Uh, we really do have some beautiful views out the windows here. And that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed your virtual tour. I'll leave you with this. This is how to find us online on social media. Uh, we're pretty active on Facebook and Twitter. So if you like, please follow us.